That doesn't look too ghetto, does it? Welcome back to the Wet Coast Fab. Uh, every time I think I'm done with the engine on this little BTX 200 mini bike, I figure there's one more thing I can do to try and get a little bit more speed out of it. What I'm gonna do, throw more carburetor at it. So if you've seen my previous videos, I have messed around with the governor linkage. I've messed around with carburetor jetting. I've tried a bunch of different things and I can't seem to get the engine up to enough speed where the torque converter opening enough to get some decent top speed out of this bike. I've got it to about 30 miles an hour and I think there's a little bit more I can get out of this engine because I've got a freer flowing exhaust on it. I've gone out and I've bought this Mikuni VM22 clone carburetor. These are fairly highly rated for these engines, maybe slightly bigger engines because this is only 196 cc. But what the hey, I'm gonna try it. So the VM22 carb kit that I bought has lots of little gizmos and doodads. So we've got a new air filter. I have lots of different gaskets and the tools to connect it all together. This is the carburetor itself. This is very much like a real motorcycle carburetor in that it has a slide instead of a butterfly. You can see the slide in there. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. It comes with this little extension and that's going to get the carburetor out far enough from the engine to clear all the bits and pieces it needs to. And we've got a fuel filter, not sure how useful that is. I have a decent assortment of jets and another stray gasket. Now on the carburetor that comes with this six and a half horsepower engine, the High Sun, the linkage is quite different because it is connected by a rod to the governor. You can see that in previous videos I've done. That sort of opens and closes the butterfly in there. The end of the throttle cable is just the cable itself. Whereas on the Mikuni clone, the cable goes into and fixes into that little point there. So rather than messing around with the bare ended cable that comes with the throttle on the bike, I have actually gone out and bought another throttle control that has the proper end on it. You can probably see it through the plastic bag there. That is the part that goes into the slide in the carburetor and will make it all work. Of course, I've got links to these parts in the description if you want to check them out. It's time to get this stuff installed. In my last video, you saw me make this little instrument panel mount, hooked it to the top of the triple trees there. And you can see I've moved my little tachometer onto it, as well as I went to the dollar store and I bought this janky little phone holder and mounted it on there. So I've got a good place to put my phone now, which can act as a speedometer when I test out this carburetor. It's held on well enough, but I probably wouldn't go too crazy on trails because I'm pretty sure the phone will just bounce right out of there. But for now, it's good enough for testing on the roads. So, so let's get this carburetor installed and see what happens. First thing I'll do is take off the air box and the carburetor. This stuff is super simple. But I think first, before I disconnect the fuel line, I'm going to actually remove all this linkage, which is not gonna be needed for the other carburetor. And that can free up some room for me to work around here. So I'm just gonna take off the eight millimeter bolts holding this on. And disconnect the old throttle cable here and here. Not gonna lose any of the springs or anything. I'm gonna put them in a safe spot because I'll probably use them in another time. In a previous video, I reconnected this in a different spot on the governor arm. I am gonna keep this spring. I'm gonna hook it onto something on the engine just to keep the governor from rattling around because it's not gonna be connected to anything after I do this. Now I've got full access to the fuel hose here and I'm just gonna take this little clamp. I'm gonna put it on there and squeeze it, not too tight, just enough to pinch the fuel flow off so my tank won't drain out onto my living room floor. There will be a little gas that comes out, but that's what paper towel is for. And I can just move that out of the way. Take off the 
shroud, which I should have actually done sooner, but I didn't. And I can disconnect the old linkage. Pull the carb right off. So if you're gonna do the same job, remove the gas tank first. It just makes everything easier. I thought I could get away with it, but I have to remove these linkages that are connected to the governor arm and I can't do that with the tank in place. So drain your fuel, pinch off the line, whatever you wanna do, just remove the tank first. Gives you a lot more access. I'm a dummy. All right, so let's see how the Mikuni carburetor fits on this. I may have to remove this. May have to put a bung in here. I'm not sure yet because I don't think there's a fitting on the carburetor for the crankcase ventilation. So this spacer comes with, but as you can see, these studs aren't gonna work. So I need to pull these studs out. And one way of doing that is just take two of the nuts that were originally holding the old carburetor on, jam them on really tight. And then you should be able to back the stud right out of the, the head itself. And there's the intake port. And in the kit are these hex socket bolts that will hold the carburetor riser in place. I think these are the right ones. I'm going to use this gasket that came in the kit as it matches up perfectly with the intake. And then that will just go on that in like that. So I'm just going to put them on, line them up, and just loosely snug them in. All right, so then the carburetor is going to sit on like that. And the nice thing about this is that it's got a slotted flange, so you can rotate the carburetor a little bit so that the float bowl is level. So you want to have your float as level as possible when the bike is sitting in its normal position. So that's kind of weird that they've provided these really long bolts. They're too long to go in this side because they'll bottom out in the bottom of the bosses here on the intake manifold, but they do work this way. Seem awkwardly long, but whatever, we'll run with it. Put that on like that. And then the second gasket that goes against the riser that way I know I've got a ceiling surface all the way through. Okay, I'm going to eyeball the level. I think it's about right there and snug that down. Okay, so the carb's installed. It's a good thing they give an extra length of fuel line because I can tell right now that that is probably not gonna be long enough to get to the gas tank. Probably what I'll do for the fuel line is the original one coming off the tank, put it into the fuel filter, and then this little hose will go into the fuel filter and continue to the carburetor. Yeah, that makes sense, kinda like that. On these filters, there's an arrow for the flow or there should be a marking or something. If there isn't, then usually the rule of thumb is the part that you can see with the filter on the inside is pointing towards the tank. That way you can see if there's any sediment building up in, in here or if the filter itself is getting dirty. Now for the governor arm, I don't want that thing just flopping around. So I'm gonna hook this spring to something to keep some type of pressure on it to the back. The governor will still work. It'll still move this arm, but it's not, obviously not connected to anything. So I think well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a tiny little hole in the shroud here and then just slip the spring through. And I think that'll be good enough just to provide some tension on the governor arm. Done and done. Okay, time to put the tank back on. Then I'm gonna have to connect the throttle to the carburetor. So you should do yourself a favor whenever you're working on fuel line is to make sure that you put a clamp on every spot that the line joins a connection because the last thing you want is a fuel line to come loose when you're out riding and gasoline starts pouring onto a hot engine and that's going to make your day very exciting to say the least. Got a link to these in the description. Pick yourself up a kit. They're super cheap. Lots of variety in there for whatever projects you might work on. Okay, so I've got the gas tank back on. 
I've got the fuel line all connected. I just a little zip tie here to hold it in place so it doesn't flop around and get abraded on everything. Connected it through here. I've got my fuel clamps on the hoses so they can't disconnect. Carburetor's all snugged, air cleaner is on. Now the next thing to do is get the throttle cable connected to the actual carburetor itself. All right, opening up this throttle kit. It's a standard 7 8 bicycle slash motorcycle diameter, so it should fit this BT200X, no problem. Comes with two grips. Probably don't need to use this one because it looks identical to the ones on the bike. That's the throttle mechanism itself and the throttle cable. So this is the end that I'm threading into the top of the VM22 carburetor and then the rest of that's going to get run up to the handlebars. So to get to the slide you have to unscrew the cap here but be warned there's a spring under tension so you want to keep your hands pushing down a little bit it'll force your hand up. It's not crazy or anything but if you just Undo it, it can go boing, and then you may find your spring somewhere in the bushes. Slide should come right out, just stick your finger in there. One point I wanna make is that you can adjust the needle by moving that little C-clip down there, not the spring, that's the one that retains it. I'll push it out and I'll show you what I mean. That's the retaining clip. Hopefully the camera can focus. You'll see that there are multiple slots on the needle itself and you can push this little C-clip off and you can move that up or down. If you move it up, that's gonna lean the mixture out because the needle will sit farther down in the jet. And if you move that clip down, it's gonna make it run richer by moving the needle up, allowing more fuel to flow. But I'm gonna leave it at its stock setting. I don't wanna mess with anything just yet because I wanna see how the bike runs with the default settings. I'm gonna put this all back together. Just put the needle in, put the clip in. You wanna make sure that you're not blocking that slot. So you wanna have it aligned properly. And then you can push it all the way down. So to install the cable, slide it through the opening in the cap. Get the spring on there, because you want that to go all the way through. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. You just need to get some tension on there to hold it back. And then slide the end through like that until it clicks and then the spring goes in like that. Now in the bore, there's a boss. So if you try to put it in any other way, it just won't go all the way down. You just have to rotate it so that slot lines up with it and then the slide will go down and then you can screw the cap back on. It won't fight you too hard. It's not a crazy heavy spring. And then just screw it down until it's snug. And that's it for that. I'd get the end of the cable in there until it seats and that makes it watertight. Now to run this cable up the handlebars, take the old one off and get the new throttle on and I'll be able to test if this actually is gonna work. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is undo the screws holding the throttle onto the handlebars. Cut these little cable ties. One of them is for the actual kill switch. And then this will just slide right off like that. I'm just gonna put this back together so I don't lose any of the bits and pieces. Out with the old. Need to thread that on there. And this little guy needs to go down in there. And then the actual throttle itself goes in like that and sits in there like that and then it all clamps together like that so check this before you try and start your bike because if i did this and started the bike and it did start it's going to try and take off on me wide open throttle so i run into a little bit of a snag here with the throttle all the way closed and on the rest right down there the cable is a tiny bit too short and it leaves the throttle slide open by about one third so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna cut this nylon back so it'll allow the throttle to close a little bit further and get me the length that i need so 
Not sure if this throttle kit is the best one, but if you do get this one, be advised, you will need to make a minor adjustment to it. So I clipped it back about halfway with my edge clippers here, and I'm gonna try the cable now and see how it works. Throttle moves smoothly. And now the slide opens all the way and closes all the way. All right, done, ready to try. I've got the throttle installed, cable hooked up, got everything zip tied nicely along the frame, got the carb cable going nice and straight into the carburetor, got the fuel line all tied down. Let's see if she starts. Almost. That was exciting. Uh, I think this might be a success. I'm gonna grab my helmet and go for a rip. See what happens. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Two things just happened on that quick little test ride. One, that cheap dollar store phone holder didn't work. My phone vibrated right out of it. And fortunately, I was able to come to a stop before I ran over my own phone. No damage done. Second of all, at more than about a third or to half throttle, the bike started bogging down. So I've pulled the slide out. I'm going to pull the jet out and I'm going to remove the C-clip on there. And I'm going to lean out the fuel mixture at higher RPMs or wider throttle and see if that changes it. And if it doesn't, I'm going to go the other direction. So I'll show you how I pull the C-clip off change the height of the needle, and then try another test ride. So I just pop the needle out, pull it out of the slide. The way I do it is I just get the pliers on one end, keep my finger there to stop the clip from fly flying out, and then just put a little bit of a pressure on there and it should just pop off. Okay, you can see it's mostly slid off and I can just grab the end here and just pull it. Now I'm gonna move it to the top ring on the needle so it sits deeper in the jet. And that's it. Drop it back in. Put this finicky clip back in with the U lined up with the slot. Let's try this again, shall we? Okay, wrong way. I'm gonna have to change the needle in the other direction and make it a bit richer. Five minutes later. Much better. I think I need to move up one or two jet sizes in the carb though. 10 seconds later. I love it. 41 mile an hour. That's a full 11 miles an hour than the old carburetor. So wow, what a difference. And it's a much more tunable carburetor as well. So I still don't have it running perfect, but I'm running really, really good. Like I said, 41 mile an hour. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you like the channel, why not subscribe? Share it around, let your friends know. If you share the channel and like the videos, then that really helps me out. It allows me to grow the channel and do some more fun stuff like this. I have a pretty ambitious thing planned for this little mini bike next and I uh, hope you stick around to see what it is. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.